so let's start of course with the Doom Machine album. So it has been out for a couple of weeks now. So what are your own thoughts and feelings on the album now that it's out? It's been great actually. Uh, even though we're in this uh, COVID situation, but uh, the reaction from everyone, you know, has been uh, so overwhelming that uh, it's been a, a, a really great feel to to have the album out and to to be getting so many good uh, reactions, you know. Now we just wanna we just want this whole thing to go away so we can go and play play it live, you know. It's been uh, very good to have to have it out because it was many years in the in the making. We were um, the album was recorded in um, two, 2019 in the summer of 2019. We had the masters uh, ready uh, in January January 2020, and then when COVID struck, uh, the the record plant uh, just like went on a halt and uh, everything stopped. So that's why the record is only coming out now. But it feels like we have this uh, baby with us for for so long, you know. And yeah, it's uh, a relief. It actually is a, a big relief to have it out now. Yeah. Yeah, was it a difficult decision to put it out now? Or how how is the experience of putting music out in a time like this? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah. I think it's very di uh, difficult uh, in a way, but very easy in another way. Because uh, everybody now has the time to listen because most of people stay stay at home um, and and although we we can't play play live and, and promote the album as we should promote it we feel that that is is getting some 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 attention that probably wouldn't get if if we, if it was not covid you know what i mean huh? so so it's a 50 50 uh, feeling but of course, we prefer to to launch it with uh, with with a tour or, or with gigs. That would would be nicer. Yeah, let's uh, go back to the album itself. Then the backdrop of the album is uh, emotionally very heavy. Uh, can you tell me a bit about how it was to write this album? Well, um, we we after we released our previous album, uh, Sonic Debris in uh, 2016, May 2016. And um, like two months after that, uh, Garcia, the, our drummer, he was a dad. So he had to be, to, to be more time at home, you know? So we, we when we were getting ready to, to go out and promote the album and play a lot live, we had to stop. And then Johnny started working uh, uh, in Angola. He, he is in Angola, in Africa, some months and then he's here in Portugal other months so we had more of like uh, periods of uh, intense uh, rehearsal and then periods where we didn't see each other and uh, so we decided to um, start this was uh, the bass player uh, Ricardo's uh, input why don't we start jamming more when we get together and just feel what comes out so we started doing that process, you know, just getting into the re the rehearsal room and not thinking about stuff and just let's see, let's see what goes. He would come up with the riff or I would come up with the riff and let's just jam. And then uh, uh, when my when my kid Antonio, when he was when he was born, he stayed um, a lot of time at the hospital. You know, he was only alive for a month and a, and a half and he. Um, and he was only at home for a week, so the rest of that period was in the in the hospital. And um, meanwhile, when uh, I was in the hospital um, with him, uh, Ricardo's baby daughter, his second baby daughter, was born in the same hospital. So uh, this this put out uh, uh, you know a lot of um, different feelings uh, in, in all of us. Uh, that feelings that are so uh, complex that even nowadays they're very difficult to uh, apprehend and uh, express uh, in words, you know. But it, as you can imagine, when, when my son died, it was like it was like a nuclear bomb that you know that started right here at, at our home. I have other kids; I have three more kids, and then it just 
spread like uh, I don't know how to every everyone else, and it was devastating, of course. But um, we got so much love from everyone, you know. For instance, when I when I recall um, the the night before uh, uh, we buried him, uh, everyone. It's a cultural thing here, you know. Uh, everyone comes to to say goodbye and, and you know share the grief with the with the family and the loved ones. And you know, people, everybody just uh, just had love to to give us, and that stayed. But um, obviously, we we just topped and even more in the process of the band, you know, because we had to take our time to heal ourselves here at home, and then here uh, with our friends, and then. When when we got up, when we finally thought, okay, let's go, uh, let's go again to the rehearsal room. Let's rehearse. We just started picking up on the same process. Let's jam again, and I and I think that um, it was pretty good for us because it, it was like a subconsciously. I don't know how how to put it in another way. You no, know? subconsciously, it was like it was a, a direct channel from from what we were all feeling and going through to what we were playing at the time, what was coming up at, the, at that uh, moment. Of course, after, after the jams, the, uh, we stayed with the, be- with the better jams and uh, we started crafting them more, you know, working, working them more into songs. But that was the, the basic, the raw emotion uh, was there. And I think that uh, when Johnny came up um, with the lyrics, you know, and most of the lyrics uh, deal with, um, this concept because when this happened it also puts you in in, in perspective you know it, it, life can be so short our time here can 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 be so short this is also ephemeral you know this all can just go away so so what are we doing uh with our time here uh, we see a lot of people you know uh, especially in social media just going into a spiral of hate you know and they, they just keep going talking to each other and going going like a, a more of a like into a, a funnel you know like a, a very not wide the opposite of wide so and yeah. we started thinking about this and then johnny started writing uh, about these teams and and that's where the um, doom machine uh, concept comes along so I don't know if you want to add more, Johnny. No, uh, ju- just to say that mo- most of the lyrics were were uh, uh, written after the, this this tragic event. Uh, so there's only two or three songs before prior from uh, th- that has another concept, but uh, I think the the hanger is still there s- somehow. No? But um, yeah, I I. I, I I, I write all all the lyrics, almost all the lyrics in Angola alone, and dealing with this this lot of lot, lot of um, anguish. Uh, lot of tristeza. Um, lot of sadness. Lot of sadness. But at the same time, uh, I, I was hope hopeful. I, I was feeling hope because. Uh, uh, Rafa's family was so positive during all the process, and and that's energy, that positiveness, uh, got into me. So when when I, despite we we we're talking about the um, do machine, like we heading to towards something bad, I think there's there's always hope. The, there's a light, so we can follow the light, and I think that light came from from Rafa's family. So that's. That's what I wanted to to add. Yeah. Okay. My condolences, of course. Yeah. Thank you. Um, as I understood, uh, you recorded the album kind of live in Sintra, your home place. So you know what a beautiful place that is. So uh, how was the recording process then for this material? Well, it, it was it was great actually. You know when. Um, when I think about uh, the albums, I have like um, memories associated to the albums, Mem- and these memories come from the from the writing process uh, uh, and from also the the recording process. And uh, I always I always listen to this album, and I remember 
uh, the the good times we had in the in the studio. You know, we we wanted to work with this producer for a long time ago. Right after our second album, I started talking to him, but our agendas ne never got uh, in sync. You know, so we could work with with each other. And uh, when he came to the rehearsal room and uh, heard the songs that were played for him. Uh, we just started talking about the songs and the process and he suggested that we recorded it live, that he had the conditions in the studio to record it live. And to us, it made a, a, an immediate click because uh, that was a challenge that we had never tried to achieve, uh, to, to overcome, you know. So, and we thought, well, what better way to uh, put this on tape well, after the process of jamming that we did, because you know the the whole process of the the songs and the whole vibe of the songs just spontaneously were spontaneously created, you know, in the rehearsal room. So it, it so, sounded to us that it was fitting to have it recorded that way, just like we do it live, just like we did it in the the rehearsal room. So yeah, the the um, the basic instrumental tracks were recorded live. It was just me. Garcia, the drummer, and Ricardo, the, um, the bass player, just into the same room, you know, just looking at each other and feeling the, the vibe of each other. And um, after that uh, initial period where you just fine tuning everything, we just had a lot of fun creating, uh, recording it. So it was actually pretty, pretty good. Great experience for us. And uh, you were talking about Sintra. This, the, the studio is in Sintra. But it's in a, uh, it's not in the in the, the Sintra Center, you know. It's in a village near the Sintra Center, a, a village right close to the sea. So you had the feeling that you were like in a isolated place, you know, just like far away. So the vibe was very much concentrated on the on the on the album, you know. It was like although we were like uh, 30 minutes away from home, it felt like we were in another country, maybe, you know. So we had that peace of mind to just be focused in the, yeah. in the recording process. And it was, it was also good because it allows you to create more uh, during the recording, you know? We were, um, there's a song, there's um, one of the bonus tracks, Feel Surreal. Uh, the middle part was like totally different. And we were recording in the studio and we we're like, guys, this is, this is not working. Uh, let's let's have a beer and let's let's think about this part. So we just just started talking about what should we do, what shouldn't we do, and then just out of the blue, an idea came to us all, and we recorded it. You know, so it was very fresh. It was like um, a very good uh, process to to experiment. Yeah. Uh, you want to add something about the recording? No. Uh... Of course, I didn't record with them at the same time. The vocals are, are recorded separately, but um, yeah, but but I felt the vibe with with them. I I I, I was the only person that stays the, the whole time uh, because I was I was there for my parts and for their parts as well. Sometimes I was alone on my parts, but they were never alone. So I spent all the time in. Uh, and and uh, there's a funny thing about it that I I. I I ended my my recording session the day after my my baby girl was born, so she was born at the fourth of August, and and I I I, I ended recorded it at the, at the, in the fifth, fifth is how we say it, yeah, uh, and that, and that's for me it's 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 a it's a great memory because uh, she was in at the hospital I couldn't I wasn't. Um, they won't let me to visit her on that day. So I took that day to, to record, but with, with all that emotion that she was just, um, she, she was just born. So uh, my, my, my performance, I think it was even better because I, I was overwhelming at the time, yeah. Okay, we mentioned Sintra, and then of course we have to talk a bit about Lisbon too. Uh, how is the scene back there? I mean, at normal times, let's not dwell on this depressing time. Yeah, th there used to be uh, a lot of places to to play, but uh, I don't think after the the COVID, uh, they're they're gonna be that many. I, I probably almost every place is gonna it's gonna close. So it's it's a it's a pretty good 
it's a pretty good um, scene if, if you if if you imagine uh, um, makes the, our dimension, our Portuguese dimension, because we, we are a small country, we don't have many people listening. But I think it's it's a, it's definitely a good a good scene. So don't know how it's gonna be afterwards. So a little bit worried about it, about that. Yeah. Yes, we are worried that with um, maybe we won't have a, a you know like a live circuit, so yeah. newer bands can come step up and and get on stage and you know just start playing live and then go on to record and and make their careers. So that's a that's an issue. I think this the scene was also um, probably a <coughs> bit stronger, like. Um, if, five to seven years ago when there uh, there was like this uh, stoner rock trend you know going on in, in portugal with lots every it seemed like every new band that um popped out w w was playing some kind of a uh, southern or stoner or doomy stuff you know now nowadays it's not so much li like that but i think we have uh good bands if you uh want to check out some portuguese bands uh, you should definitely listen to uh, to me. My all-time favorite is uh, Black Bombay. They've played everywhere in Europe and uh, the U.S. And uh, then you have uh, the Quartet of War. They're from Lisbon. You also have uh, Dollar Lama. They're a bit um, more heavy. And you have uh, also the Black Wizards. They're a band that has played all over Europe. And you have this new band coming up. They're, I don't know if this is their first or their second album. They're called Earth Drive. They also hear from uh, Lisbon. It's their second album. So there's some stuff ha happening, but it's uh, slower in the scene, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's go back to Miss Lava, of course. And the uh, video of Brotherhood of Eternal Love came out also. Um, how important are visuals for you? Yeah, it's very important. It, it's like a... a, a it's as as important as the music, as the lyrics. It's the the visual, of course. So we have uh, one designer that works with us uh, since the beginning. Is a mensch. Is a very close friend, uh, especially to Rafa. He's very talented, and and I think he 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 brings us uh, a, a vibe, uh, uh, a distinguished vibe that we can't find any anywhere else. So. It's 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 like a fifth element that his heart, you know. So Mislava, without his heart, his art uh, wouldn't be so uh, so uh, wouldn't be Mislava, of course. So complete. Yeah. So it's very important the visuals. Uh, we 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 always uh, try to put some videos, and of course, uh, we we let all the directors have their own inputs. To the songs, we, we just uh, give the, give them the lyrics, or, or but almost all the videos are, are ideas from the directors. So, uh, but Brotherhood, it's a little bit our idea with the, with the, with with the director, but um, we we always let other people to to express themselves from through our music. So uh, it's I, I think this for us it's it's a very important part. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's like a, a collaborative uh, process that, that we do to to get this other visual dimension become more uh, incorporated with our music, you know. So in this, me and Johnny, we we also work with um, creativity in our uh, um, da daily work. So I call it like that. So uh, we are used to, to talking to different uh, creatives from, from different areas and explaining uh, and briefing them and then going through the process with them. And I think that in this, uh, in this last uh, video for, for Brotherhood, this was the, the best example because um, we contacted this um, young filmmaker. Uh, called, he's a Portuguese filmmaker. He's called uh, Guilherme Rich. He, he also plays, actually, he plays in a, this black metal band called Garia. And uh, we started talking to him. Uh, we sent him the, the music, and then Johnny explained to him the, the lyrics and the kind of visuals that uh, would best uh, suit the, uh, the vibe of the music and the lyrics of the music. 
and he just went um, he just went spot on it, you know. 